What is going on YouTube? It's Tyler from Mission VR where it's my mission to bring you guys good quality VR content. Well, it was pretty big week for Population One and virtual reality and that's what today's video is going to be on is the biggest update to the biggest multiplayer VR game that really is available on the market right now. And really this update is kind of a game changing update. So we're going to kind of go through, you know, what it added, what's actually going on and really my thoughts on the future of how this is going to operate and whether this is good or bad for the game. And yeah, all that good stuff. Guys, with that being said, please do drop a like on this video, subscribe to my channel. I want to hear from you guys in the comment section. If you are a big into pop one, which, you know, if you follow me, you probably know that that's my biggest game. It's the game I play the most of. I love that game so much. I want to hear what you guys think about this update. I know a lot of people are really excited about it, but I do want to hear kind of just some comments and what you guys are thinking about it. Also, just to let you guys know, I do have an Amazon storefront now um, with some of the Quest accessories that I use and some other various uh, VR related things. So if you guys are interested in helping support me and helping um, support my mission into bringing you good quality VR content, check out the Amazon storefront and uh, maybe pick yourself up an accessory or two. I do get um, commissions based on that. So I do appreciate that. But without further ado, let's hop on into this video and talk about this Pop One Sandbox update and what all the good things are with it. Okay, so. First and foremost, this update is by far the biggest update that we've ever seen in Population 1. Um, and, you know, I, I say that coming off the heels of the massive Metropolis update, which really changed the entire map. And for th so many reasons, it was so good. And Metropolis was just incredible um, whenever they added it. And it really was the biggest update. And then they added some new guns and new weapon mechanics, which was a big change. But this, this is different. This is like an entirely new game to some extent. Um, and really what they've allowed to happen here is that you can go in and create custom maps and then you can play against people with po all the population one mechanics now here's where i think that this um this update really shines right you have the ability to go in and just really be creative and create a really cool arena based map and some of these maps are actually freaking awesome and they create some really unique um gameplay loops that you know give give you the sense of kind of like halo 3 custom games and that's exactly what the development team was going for here if you you know grew up in the era where halo 3 and halo reach were around then you know you know you played a lot of custom lobbies in those on the forge world maps um and the different things like that and some of those had an immense amount of replay value in them and you know all of us you know that played halo reach and halo 3 really remember those moments and those games that were created by the community as some of the best memories we ever had so do I think that's a good thing for Population 1? Absolutely, I do 100%. I think that this this definitely changes the pace of the game. And after spending several hours in this update and jumping around from maps to maps, there were some pretty fun, you know, little niche unique experiences that uh, I was enjoying while, while playing this. Now, here's where I think that this is a drawback. As of right now, the only current game mode that you can really set up in this custom games is Team Deathmatch. And, the team deathmatch in population one, I feel like some of these maps, it goes way too fast. It's really easy to rip off 30 kills in like under five minutes. And the game's just, in a game that lasts five minutes, it just doesn't, there's no tenseness to it. There's no, um, you know, feeling of needing to clutch the round or anything like that. Because, you know, you're not really in it. You're not in the trenches long enough to build that, to build that momentum, to build that feeling of like, this is getting heated up, right? The game's over before it even starts. And that's one of my complaints with Team Deathmatch in general. And it wasn't as bad on the, on the you know, main Team Deathmatch whenever they had it in Population 1, just because there was... The maps varied from time to time, but you know, if you got Metropolis or Tower, you know, the games would usually go a little bit faster. I wish they would up this to 50 kills um, generally, or give you the option to up it to 50 kills yourself as part of the custom games lobby. Um, now, some of the some of the stuff here that I really enjoyed, like there was a Wild Wild West map that um, it was the 15 kills, but there was no climbing or flying at all, and you were slower, much slower. Basically, it was the Wild Wild West. You had a Magnum, and it was just you had to outshoot the opponent, and that again was just a custom lobby that a custom game that was just different and with the pop one mechanics you know enjoying this game and the mechanics of this game so so much this was a lot of fun there was a zero gravity you know space game with all shotguns where you're just flinging around and just lighting each other up with shotguns this was a fast paced enjoyable game mode i really had a great time playing um those game modes and then there were some other classic team deathmatch maps that i thought i really enjoyed just the overall all, overall vibes to them um but again i think that this update falls just a little bit short whenever it comes to game Game mode selection there's no ability at all to play um, to create a custom map to play squads in there's no 
ability at all to play, uh, have a custom map to play legions in or anything like that. And I think that that is really where this could shine. And, and the fact that you go into the sandbox mode, and what I was worried about was, is there just going to be a big list of lobbies you can join and it's going to be random and you just have to hop into a lobby with players or whatnot. No, you actually can go into a matchmaking and it puts you into a lobby and then you're able to vote on the next map. So you can kind of go through a map rotation on, you know, similar to how, how Call of Duty are, right? You could stay in a, you could stay in a single lobby and you can vote for the next map and you can keep playing in the same lobby. That's great for team deathmatch. I want them to do that for squads because if you get into a really good squads lobby, let's say every team's really sweaty, right? And you play in some of these custom maps that I'm sure people are going to be able to put together really intense, you know, maps. And again, I know that they're not going to be the size of the main population one map, but again, a huge gripe with the community right now with the main population one map is that there's not enough players on the map. You know, if you could fit all 18 players inside of Metropolis, then these maps are being built, you know, some of them are not quite that, even that big, and they would not be able to support squads, but at least allow you to the ability to, you know, maybe have a custom template where if you're going to make a squads map, it has to be a certain size, you get like a certain like square footage, and then you have to fill that map up, you know, in order to play squads. There's so much ability for them to expand this update. Um, into bigger and better areas in the future. And I think that that's kind of, you know, after playing it and thinking about it for several days, because when I first played it, I was definitely disappointed, um, you know, cause I'm just, I don't play population one for team deathmatch. You know, I hop in when I'm waiting for people to hop on, you know, I play for 30 minutes or so. And then I'm like, I'm ready to go for the actual main game because team deathmatch is just mindless killing. You know, you're going out there, you're just out shooting the opponent, which there's a place in time for that. You know, whenever you're just trying to pass a little bit of time. But one of the reasons why this game for me is so, so impactful is because you have have to think it's so much strategy involved on you know when you're rotating you know oh you're getting rotated on what's your next move how are you getting out of a, a sticky situation right or you're getting pinched what are you what's your next play like sometimes you got to shoot your way out sometimes you got to rotate your way out like there's so much strategy involved and in team deathmatch there's really no strategy it's just running and gunning and that's it and you know there's other games for that and i just wouldn't play population one for that it's a battle royale game at its heart and i feel like this update really focused so much on other things rather than the battle royale elements and they didn't allow you to actually create battle Battle Royale maps, which is a little bit disappointing. And I was definitely disappointed at first, but upon further thinking about it, I think that this is just the beginning of this. I think this is just the beginning of this update and what it's actually going to do for this game and for the community. I know the community so far from what I have seen has been really excited. And again, I do want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this update, because it's really, it's controversial for me. I was really not liking it at first. I thought it was, you know, kind of a waste of development time. I think there's a lot of things that need to be improved upon in the main game first, um, including more guns. You know, I think there should add some customization options. I think the different, you know, star levels of guns should have different appearances so if i have a one star gun compared to a four star gun you know the four star gun should just look cooler right i think there's a little things that add immersion to the game um you know maybe loadouts you know if you pick up you know your mp5 you have a specific uh attachments on it i think there's so many ways that they could expand this game and again the biggest one for me is there's really not enough people in these lobbies they really feel empty um you know you run through some of these and then it's like playing legions for you know, weeks, the, the last time the Legion cycle was out, you realize that there, because there's more people and there's more people to revive and the survivability of these teams is much better, the games become really competitive. And that's where the game shines so much is when the game is just so competitive and you get into the last zone and there's still 10, 12, 13 people alive and you're slugging your way out and you're stuck on a rock with your boys down low. Like that's, that's what makes this game what it is. And I feel like the sandbox update, again, mindless killing in team deathmatch is not intense the way that the main game can get. However, this update is really cool. I think that having team deathmatch like that is good for the community in a sense that the main game can get sweaty. There's no doubt about it. It can get really sweaty. And for new players that have no idea even how to revive or anything, and of course they skipped a tutorial because, you know, that would take too much time for them. They hop in and they don't know how to do anything, right? It's a really big disadvantage. Even somebody who's only played, you know, maybe 10, 20 games is just at such a massive disadvantage against some of the people in this game myself being one of them. You know, if I go up against somebody like that, it, I mean, it's just, it's completely unfair. And, it, and I'm sure for them, it's not a fun experience. 
This takes that away. I think that they can hop into Team Deathmatch and they could learn the mechanics of the game, play different variations of maps, and then hop into the main game when they're ready. I think this might help the community grow in the population one, which is good. And then in future updates, if they can expand upon this to allow you to actually build squads maps, I think this could be a really, really intensely awesome update. But that all remains to be seen. It's gonna be hard to determine where the future of this update takes this game because right now I still think it's 50 50. I think that they spent a lot of development time on this when they could have been developing the main game. But if the main game, you know, has player player based numbers dwindling a little bit, which I don't know if that's the case or not. But if that is the case, and it's probably due to how sweaty the lobbies are, because a lot of the people playing now are good at the game because that's the people that have invested time into it, right? So newer players hop in and they get absolutely wrecked. So this might help newer players stay in the game longer, which again, helps big box to create keep creating more content. There's a lot of things that I think this game is going to do and the sandbox update, you know, might actually be a pillar for them to expand upon because some of the game modes are really fun. If you're playing with swords only and high fling, like that's a really fun, enjoyable experience. And some people may actually pick up this game just to experience that or to build a map and then go play a map. So I do think this update is, is it's very 50 50 for me. I, you know, personally for me, I wanted to see them improve the battle royale of the game and really expand upon that. But at the same time, I do understand the need to take the game in a certain direction to allow newer players and players that are picking up the game and to generate new hype for the game because you know everybody at this point knows about the game if you haven't picked it up by now you really should it's it's the best vr multiplayer game that there is but if you're one of those people it's like i don't know i'm not sure this sandbox update might push you over the edge and be like i definitely want to check it out now because there are a lot of really really cool and fun game modes that you can actually play in this overall my opinion about this update um, I do think it, I, I think it has some legs that may run. I, I it's going to only time is going to be able to tell whether this update really saved the game or really hurt the game. And we'll find out with time on that one. Well, guys, that is going to be it for this video. I appreciate you guys tuning in a little bit of a shorter video, a little bit of a different style video, but I'm super passionate about population one. This is my favorite VR game of all time. I've never experienced a game that has been able to get the heart rate going the way this game has and just enjoy the hell out of this experience. So I'm very passionate about this game and this update clearly is a big, massive changing of the guard to some extent on what this game actually is. I do think that it has the ability to maybe potentially take this game in a direction that's going to increase the player base and make it a game that's going to have players for years and years to come or it's just going to separate the player base so much that no one's going to play the main game anymore and then the game's going to slowly die really hope that's not the case and you guys really need to make sure that's not the case by if you haven't picked up population one yet and you're looking for a multiplayer vr game with a community this is it this game is it make sure you guys pick this up guys drop a like on this video subscribe to my channel i want to hear from you guys in the comment section please do let me know what do you guys think about this update if you have played it yet if you haven't picked up population one again you really should check it out let me know what you guys think i will see you guys in the next one peace